All right, good people. Great day, everybody. I am attorney Takora Davis. I'm the founder and CEO of The Creators Law Firm. And people pay me to uh, help protect their smarts and help protect their brand. So a lot of times people are hiring my law firm and those of us who work here for trademark registration, copyright registration, contract drafting, and licensing. And so today I'm actually going to speak a little bit about something that I do a lot with my private clients who have hired hired our firm. I'm going to share with you a little bit more about what it looks like when you are promoting your business and how you can enhance the value of your intellectual property. So please share with me your name, you know, your business, where you're tuning in from, because we want to make sure, uh, because a lot of people are going to watch this on the replay and you never know who could be interacting with you in your business. So again, today we're going to talk about the three ways that you can promote your business to increase your trademark's value. So this might be a little bit of an advantage thing, but I'm assuming that people know what a trademark is. But if you don't, I'm assuming also that I'm talking to entrepreneurs who already have their brands registered, their trademarks registered. It's okay if you haven't, but the individuals who really are my clients or are striving to be my clients or those that I work with, a lot of times they have one, two, three trademarks. They're looking to enhance their intellectual property portfolio very strategically, and they understand the value of their intellectual property. And so a trademark is a business name, tagline, logo, slogan, anything that's going to help you stand out in the marketplace. And so when people experience your trademark, what should happen is that they are able to separate you and distinguish you from your competitors and your counterparts. So sometimes what happens is people have names that are a little bit too similar to others, or they haven't even gotten around to the point where they are striving to get a federally registered trademark and it opens up a world of trouble to them. But for those of you who have already pursued that pathway or you're currently having a trademark pending, one of the things that you definitely should be doing if your trademark is already registered or if you have a trademark that is pending and assuming that your attorney has approved for you to promote your brand, promote it to the max. You want to make sure as many people know about your business as possible because that's first and foremost one of the main things that you can do to increase your trademarks value is by actually marketing your business. Far too many times people are sitting silently, they're sitting quietly, they're afraid to promote their business during that trademark process where things are pending and sometimes that can actually hurt you in the registration cycle and process. You want to make sure that you're able to demonstrate to the United States Patent and Trademark Office how you are using that trademark so in the event, you know, there is some sort of refusal, your attorney has ammo to use. Hopefully that ammo works in your favor and that ammo, that evidence works in your favor to persuasively argue for you to be able to get over that registration finish line. So ultimately the very first thing you want to make sure that you're doing to promote your business and increase the value of the trademark is market the business and not only market, monetize it, make money off of it. Okay. So that's one of the first things that you want to do. And that's just kind of like a given we should be doing that, but just in case you didn't know, that's one of the things. When it comes to also increasing the value of your trademark, you have to understand that trademarks are essentially property, right? And so I think that a lot of people don't even realize that trademarks are property. And what ends up happening is that, you know, because people don't realize that they're property, they're not promoting their brands, or they're not even realizing the value that the trademark can have. So a trademark is property, okay? Always thinking of it just like your home is property, you have jewelry that's property, you have assets inside, you know, that stuff is property, it is valuable. And even though you can't touch a trademark, you know, you can't feel it and things like that, like you can a phone or a car, it doesn't make it any less valuable. In fact, your intellectual property in your business sometimes is 40 to 60% of your business's value, but oftentimes it is the least protected. So I want you to remember that trademarks are property, all right? And the ways that you're going to be able to increase the value of the trademark is one marketed. The next thing that you want to do to increase the value of the trademark is you want to consider licensing. So you want to consider licensing the trademark, right? And so you may say, what's well, core? What's the licensing? Just like you have a license to drive a car, you can license your trademark. So that means that you are able, the government gives you the ability to operate a motor vehicle on the roads <laughs> as long as you behave in a certain way, right? So just like we have driver's licenses and having those licenses are a privilege. Your trademark, if you decide to license it to someone else, there are certain privileges that can come along with the license. So essentially, when it comes to intellectual property licensing, this means that you are 
are allowing someone to use your intellectual property. In this case, we're going to consider trademarks, but this can be applicable to patents or copyrights or anything else. But you're saying, hey, I'm going to allow you to use my trademark under these limited circumstances, this limited scope, right, under these limited conditions. And those conditions should be composed within a contract. And you should also have a really strong strategy that is backed up by legal knowledge, legal proof, legal strategy, and a really strong legal team that's going to help you be able to navigate into that. A lot of speakers and course creators are now operating and moving into this realm where they are licensing their curriculum to universities, to other coaches and consulting programs and things like that. So you think about it that way. If you have your intellectual property protected, your trademarks registered, your copyrights registered, you're creating curriculum, you can then turn this around and be able to monetize it. And guess what? When you license your trademark and you let other people use it under these limited circumstances, what ends up happening is you (laughs) are increasing the value of your trademark. This all goes back to this. How are we going to make more money from our intellectual property, right? It's not enough to just stop at protection. If you stop at protection, you are not really understanding the full value of what it is that you're building. How are we going to increase the value of your brand? How are we going to increase the value of your business? And so I'm giving you strategies that you can actually implement today, right now, when you're looking at your marketing plan, you're looking at your business plan, and you're looking at your five-year plans, especially for those of you who create curriculum and things like that, you may want to consider licensing. The other thing that I would appreciate everybody who's doing this, if you're coming in on a replay, make sure you type replay. But also if you're tuning in live, please share this because the knowledge that I'm dropping is something that a lot of people don't have the skill set or do they, they don't even know how to dive into this. And this is next level teaching. So I'm doing a whole masterclass right now and I know it's very valuable, but a lot of people don't even realize it, all right? So licensing, again, licensing that intellectual property is allowing someone else, another company to use it for a particular goods or particular services. This is actually more common than you think. If you look at universities, if you look at people who sell university gear, that's probably some of our most common interactions with trademark licensing amongst many other things. But think about who is selling shirts and they have your school's logo on them and they might be at the campus bookstore or, an off, or a bookstore that's off campus or an online store. Those companies have worked out licensing agreements with the universities. And guess what? That university is saying, yes, you can use this trademark for this limited scope. You can put it on t-shirts and then you're going to pay us royalties and you're going to pay us those royalties for every single month or X amount of time. And you're allowed to use our logos, our taglines, our things like that underneath your merchandise, your apparel under these limited circumstances. And so they have brand guides that that individuals use to be able to guide their knowledge and their uses of the trademark. The thing about licensing is that you have to make sure that you're doing this very, very carefully because you could really lose out on a lot of money if it's not a well-drafted agreement, okay? So licensing, again, it's so great. I mean, these sports teams, universities, all that type of stuff, that's probably where you've seen licensing happening a lot, all right? The third way that you can market and promote your business to increase your trademark's value is co-branding with another company. So co-branding with another company, that's basically that you are going to take advantage of each other strengths of their trademarks. So sometimes we have seen these amazing collaborations where I remember growing up and it was a chapstick. I think it was like Smackers, Bonnie Bell. I can't even remember, but I think it was Bonnie Bell. But they partnered with like Dr. Pepper and they teamed up to create these flavored lip glosses or like Betty Crocker and Hershey's where they collaborate on like a new brownie flavor or you've seen where like, I think it was like Louis Vuitton and Nike, they partnered, right? So they're co-branding with another company. And so what ends up happening when you co-brand is that you will be able to, you know, you will be able to take advantage of the strength of someone else's trademark. And so I think a lot of times those of us who are in the digital age and the digital realm, we don't even consider doing that. But being able to leverage someone else's audience is going to help you maximize the intellectual property that you have and being able to borrow their audience, being able to get in front of their audience and being able to co-brand, whether it be a workshop or a podcast or a particular course. I'm trying to bring this outside of the product realm to some of the service providers. It can also happen with those who are in the product space who are small business owners as well. Looking at co-branding and creating unique experiences together is going to allow you to be able to do this. I think Mia Ray, she's really, really good. And I feel like, I feel like I, I got to go look at this and, and create an example of this. But co-branding is another amazing way 
way to be able to increase and enhance the value of your intellectual property. And just because these big companies are doing it, it doesn't mean that's exclusive to them. What it means is that we can learn from what the gems that they have laid out before us so that we're able to increase our intellectual property portfolio's value, right? And then finally, this is like a bonus. This is basically getting capital through securing or securitization of your trademark. So this happens is when the company use the value of the trademark and other intellectual property to generate financing. And so sometimes people don't, first of all, they don't even realize that they can leverage their trademarks to get loans from the bank or assign an interest in their trademark to the bank to be able to leverage it for loans. And so people don't realize that those are some of the things that they can do. And this really something that's not very common in terms of traditional financing, but being able to do that, that's another great way to be able to, to demonstrate to the bank that you have this interest, right? This intellectual property that can be leveraged for capital and the bank may even go through a valuation process. So you can actually see what your brand is worth. And so this will help increase the value of the brand because you actually have something tangible here. Again, you want to make sure you have really good legal and financial counsel when it comes to things like this. If your trademark is registered with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you are required to not only register your assignments, if you're assigning an interest to your trademark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, but you should also do that when it comes to licensing agreement. If you have a licensing agreement, you want to make sure that you register that and get it on file with the USPTO. Again, these are ways in which you can promote your business to increase your trademark's value. None of this is out of reach for anybody. None of this is out of reach for any of you to be able to market your business intelligently, potentially license your products, your programs, your services, and curriculum that you create to third parties. And that will also increase the value of the intellectual property. And then also considering co-branding, being able to collaborate intelligently on joint venture agreements and things of that nature with individuals who may or may be within your same niche or even have a complimentary service. I was speaking with someone today and she is like an, an agent for creative. So she represents individuals who are TikTok creators and uh, uh, social media influencers and things like that. So naturally there's a synergy between what I do because I represent and protect the creative assets of those individuals. And then she also goes further at the advocacy process where she might be negotiating contracts and representing them in brand deals, right? And so there's a natural synergy between our businesses where what I do doesn't necessarily overlap or encroach into the area of what she's doing. They only complement each other. So if she and I entered into a co-branding agreement together, that might be something that makes sense for my type of business. Whereas perhaps, you know, you have a business and you're a t-shirt business and you want to co-brand with another business that maybe they have earrings, right? Maybe they sell something else. And so you can create this collaborative campaign with your shirts and they could also co-brand with you when it comes to earrings. And the next thing you know, you have this crossover campaign where you're leveraging and tapping into that other person's audience. They're tapping into yours because there's synergies between the audience. We just have to move a lot more strategically than we have before because, you know, this is how you got to play to get to the next level. Okay. And so again, this presentation was really delivered to you if you're very serious about protecting your intellectual property and you're going to take it a step further with registering your works with the appropriate government entities because the registering of those works, if you know what you're doing and you have the right strategy, registering those works is going to open up a lot of doors of opportunity to you and it's going to help you be better positioned in the marketplace, particularly if you're interested in franchising your business or potentially selling it one day. So I hope that you all gather a lot of gems that I just dropped because they were a lot on this live training. So I hope you guys had an amazing night. Make sure that you share this on all the social media channels. And if you're watching on the replay, type replay, tag some friends because I believe that a lot of people will get value out of tonight's training. Have a good night.